Welcome back to AWE TV. My name is Mark Pizer and with me is Dan Eisenhart, General Manager of Headworn Devices at Intel. Dan, thanks for joining us. You had a talk earlier today um, titled Butterfly Effect, Future of Headworn 2031. Right? Um, where you kind of kind of try to draw out the future and and how headworn devices will will tie into our lives. Can you tell us a little bit about that talk? Yeah, it's a really interesting topic because here at this show we're all talking about stereoscopic, full AR, full color. Mm. We're talking a lot about enterprise and we're talking a lot about problems that we can solve with a very immersive experience. Yeah. But really, if you look at the form factor and the technology, it's really not there yet at all. Uh, at least for mainstream. So we are talking about vertical still, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of uh, needs there that we can solve today, and we're, I think there's a lot of companies that are doing that. But if we talk about sort of the everyday perception of what smart eyewear can do for us, you know, that's further out. And I think we sort of the false start that we saw with, uh, with Google Glass, which was very important for the industry, but it was viewed from mainstream as kind of a false start. We're really looking at, I think we have to reinvigorate and really draw up that big vision for, mm -hmm. of course, this is happening but what's it going to look like and what's it going to do for us yeah. why and i wanted to to paint that picture and talk about some of the challenges as well that we have to, to solve as an industry and also as consumers kind of what we can expect yeah interesting you bring up google glass um it, it, it introduced the idea of i'm going to walk around everywhere with this thing on my head and some of the things that came out were you know developers potentially not happy with it limited interaction and also how is it perceived outside of the user so um, so Intel it sounds like is putting a lot of emphasis um, on head-worn devices Internet of Things how did you get involved with Intel you were you started a company called Recon Intel had acquired that tell us how, how, how that relationship started and where it's headed now yeah we took uh, as Recon Instruments we took an investment from Intel Capital back in 2013 okay uh, and that was really the beginning of the relationship uh, and that was a really important strategic investment. So we were looking at this both from the perspective of, hey, we could get access to some really great silicon that we could put into our next product. And sure. We can, uh, you know, partner with the most iconic company, you know, most would argue, in, in Silicon Valley. Um, and, um, and, and that turned out to be a really, uh, uh, a really good decision for us, of course, because sure. through that uh, relationship with Intel Capital, that moved into an acquisition and we, you know, some good dialogues with Brian Krasanich. He had almost he had just you know joined Intel, and he had a grand vision about what Intel was going to do mm. in the wearable space. And in the wearable space, of course, there's wrist-worn devices, there's, there's body-worn devices, there's um, there's head-worn devices, and there's you know sensors and, and, and stuff for the enterprise space. Sure. And, and Intel, and you know, he was articulating a vision for tackling all of that because Intel needs to be inside every everything and really drive that uh, virtuous cycle where you've got all this data that's created. That moves into the data centers, mm -hmm. and of course, Intel is very active in the data centers. Um, and, and and so so IoT is really becomes sort of the headline for you know how Intel is gonna is gonna be uh, driving growth in, in, in the future. So for 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 for, for Recon Instruments for us. Uh, we always had a very focused approach in sports, and we wanted to drive that use case for the consumer. Mm -hmm. And we were very, very focused on that. So we built uh, that user experience and the backend, you know, software platform and the mobile apps and the uh, industry partnerships with Oakley, it's owned by Luxottica, and a number of other brands, sort of end to end. And that product expertise was something that was important for Intel to get. Yeah. They're already developing it inside, but they wanted to get. Uh, I guess something a little bit more product group that had actually launched commercial products. For in sure, that's space. important. Yeah. yeah. You, so it sounded like the vertical you were working with at Recon was sports. Yes. We're, we're talking about verticals. Yeah. Um, and I mean, it, I think there may be some allusion to this, but I think when a manufacturer with a head-worn device, HMD, they have to choose a vertical also. They can't just attack the three interested verticals. But it, would you recommend that they they focus to at least one? I mean, yes. Oil and gas. There's mining. The, yeah. uh, manufacturing, there's automation. I mean, I, I, I always believe in, in focus, especially when you're talking about uh, an industry where you're asking 
asking people to wear something on their face that sure. they normally wouldn't wear. In a price, maybe they would already be wearing goggles or masks, but, but still, the idea that you're going to have this data fed directly into your brain yeah. uh, and, and try and make that as seamless as possible, it's very difficult to come in with a one-size-fits-all. It's almost impossible. Okay. I think over time, of course, all these verticals will come together and form a horizontal. We'll, we'll get convergence on in the industry standards, mm -hmm. and we'll get platforms that are going to work. And that's where, of course, Intel wants to play. Uh, but I think you know, for for companies that start out, you need to focus, uh, and, and and it really drove the platform for us. So we we had focus, but we still created the platform. Mm -hmm. You know, with the full you know Android SDK and API and mobile apps that we could scale. You know, basically into anything, including yeah. enterprise. Yeah. Um, you said you, you had all the pieces together. Intel uh, appreciated that. Uh, but Intel chips are in consumer devices. I mean, what, what does it take to get us to that point where consumers are interested in HMDs, uh, where it's, it's not just kind of a, an enterprise solution, but so it's a consumer solution. What, what, what does it take to get yeah. to there? So it's a pretty easy answer. It has to look exactly like what you're like wearing this right thing. now. Yeah. Right. And that's what I was wearing on stage. I don't usually wear glasses, but I definitely would if uh -huh. they look like that. Uh, and that's the idea. So how do you get the form factor down? So that yeah. uh, of the technology and and make sure you have full day battery life and still maintain exactly that form factor and the weight of it and the weight and the cost and well the balance, we and, the, and the cost as cost well be yeah you pay a little bit more so imagine you don't have to have a smartphone anymore because you won't and then that always said in 2031 a lot of people are going to have that type of eyewear with full you know smart device functionality sure so you don't really need the smartphone um, so. Uh, yeah, you're gonna pay a premium for that, but at scale, if you want to go to mainstream, it can't be like 500 bucks extra. Like it could yeah. be maybe a few hundred bucks extra. 2031, though, um, 15 years away. How how can we bring that closer to 2016? I mean, five years away, or where do you think we'll be in five years? Yeah. So we, it's a good question. We started out at Recon in 2008. The team was joined, actually 2006, but we started really uh, in 2008. We launched the first product in 2010. And back then, uh, you know, I, I, I thought things were going to happen a lot faster than they actually sure. did. Sure, I think we were, all did. And there were companies yeah. before us, of course, that had, that had thought that too. So now we, here we are in 2016, you know, it's still not mainstream. Mm. And we still see, even in sports, in those verticals, it's not mainstream in those verticals. So things take time, especially when you're talking about, you know, people have to change their physical appearance to use these products. So I think uh, what's really going to drive this is going to be investments in the technology stack at the lower level, so at the chip level, and this is where Intel comes in, investing in a chip that will allow us to have a foam factor that looks like that and will allow us to have all the power with a very, very small battery. Sure. Once you get there, then the designers and the app developers and everybody else, they will get behind that and, and, and we can make it work. But it's very difficult to actually do that and still give you enough functionality for people right. to care about it. So I think it's a step function. I think you'll see sort of smartwatch functionality come, uh, go on your eyes, and then you'll see you'll see more immersion, more you know full color. You'll see stereoscopic, but it it'll it'll take some time because you cannot break the form factor. You cannot right. break that because people will immediately abandon it, and that's why it's going to take time. You you think everyone is so used to this version of, of glasses that even changing just by a little, uh, it'll break. The, I think you can change a little, okay, but not a lot. Like we're talking, maybe you can change it 10, 15 grams if it's well balanced, yeah. but but you're not gonna, uh, you know, 50 grams on top is not gonna be acceptable. So yeah, understood. Like we, we started um, at the top, we talked about Google Glass, and that was kind of, it looked like this, but then it had, had know, the, this though. hook out here, which yeah. which people immediately noticed that, you know, you can, you can pan a room and point out, okay, those are not real glasses. Yeah. Just because in our, in our minds, we know uh, intrinsically what glasses look like, even just for, for just glance at them um, but so you're saying would, would you think that it would have to get smaller than this or is this okay uh, something sticking be, out that far it's not okay and I think for everyday consumers for enterprise different for everyday consumer it has to be completely integrated okay and it has to look like a regular pair of glasses for mainstream to adopt I'm sure, not sure. saying that we're going to wait out for the next 10 years for the next 15 years no no we're going to see many different versions and sure. we're going to see you know versions that look like that and have very little functionality just like a basic text based notifications and yeah. that's going to come out very soon but to go and look at fully immersive AR where you have optic recognition yeah. uh, and you can annotate things in your visual field and you can basically have a seamless experience with it those challenges are very difficult to solve they're being solved but that will take more time yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying uh, for mainstream to adopt that at the price point with the phone factor all the battery life 
jumps are big. Those are big challenges. Yeah, there's a lot of challenges about that. There's a lot. Well, are you ready for the next 15 years? I'm, I'm absolutely <laughs> ready for the next 15 years. I can't wait to get rid of my smartphone. Yeah, okay. Well, <laughs> until then, uh, again, Dan Eisenhart, uh, General Manager with Headworn Devices at Intel. My name is Mark Pizer. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.